Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know, on this channel, I like to cover the story of Call of Duty. Whether that be Black Ops, Modern Warfare, or Warzone, we like to dive deep into the story. And when I found out that Black Ops Cold War was going to be the game that was coming out, and it was taking place between Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, there was a bunch of questions I was hoping it would answer. And some of them it did, but one of them it absolutely did not. You see, at the very beginning of Black Ops 2, you find out that Frank Woods has been captured by Raul Menendez and is being held captive in Angola and Alex Mason is then sent in to go and rescue him but one thing that has never been answered as far as the Black Ops universe goes is why was Frank Woods captured in the first place and as I've found out trying to do research on it it's not an easy answer. But about a month ago, I was lucky enough to interview James C. Burns, who was the original voice actor for Frank Woods, and he gave me this advice. Who are the other people in the shipping container? That's what- Lovely that, question. That's the question that you would want to research. Who are the people in the shipping with Woods? What is that about? Okay. First time I've ever said that out loud. So for the rest of this video, what I'm going to attempt to do is try to answer the question, how Frank Woods got captured, and it's not easy. So to start this out, you first have to realize that this is not the first time that Frank Woods has been held a POW. In fact, it is the second that we personally know about. And what I mean by this is at the end of Black Ops 1, Alex Mason gets in a fist fight with Lev Kravchenko. And at this time, Frank Woods comes to his rescue pulls a grenade on him, they jump out a window, and you see an explosion. And at the end of Black Ops 1, you assume that both of them are dead, but obviously we know that that is not the case. And there is actually a little bit of an explanation to this at the beginning of Black Ops 2. I was in my A and uh, But your old man thought I was dead. After all that shit Kravchenko did to him, the numbers... Reznov, he's stuck in his head. He had no idea it was real. How the fuck could he? Kravchenko, when I sliced that bastard open, he saved everyone's ass. When he comes to first, boom. Welcome to the Hanoi Hilton. Six months later, they shipped me over to Da Nang. And this fucking place made the Hilton look good. Plus 17 of my group. By 72, it was just me. I was not gonna die in a fucking swamp. All right, so if you didn't catch on to it, this was the first time that Frank Woods got captured. After he jumped out of the window with Lev Kravchenko, Kravchenko woke up first and took him prisoner of war. Basically, we can assume from this the grenade bounced elsewhere and both of them were fine. But because Kravchenko woke up first, he was able to capture Frank Woods. So after doing so, they took him POW at the Hanoi Hilton or in Hanoi. So just for a little bit of a comparison, originally when Frank Woods jumped out of the window with Kravchenko, they were somewhere along a waterway in Laos. After he was captured, he was then taken to Hanoi and held in the Hanoi Hilton. After which, he was then transported to Da Nang, which is further south in Vietnam. At this point, he eventually was the sole survivor of his crew of people that he was being held POW with, and he actually managed to escape solo by himself. This was in the year 1972. So why do I bring this up? Well, it's to set precedent on a timeline, because a lot of the time in my comments, I see these two times of Frank Woods being captured be conflated together. So the first one that we saw there took place in Asia, and it took place in 1972. Whereas at the beginning of Black Ops 2, Frank Woods is in an Angola, and it's in the year 1986. To understand how he got there, we have to look at what happens in between. So what we do know of this is the Black Ops Cold War War campaign takes place in the early 1980s, specifically right around 1981. And throughout this campaign, we don't actually learn too much about Alex Mason or Frank Woods. It's predominantly focused on Bell and Adler. But after the campaign ends and we start to see a little bit more about multiplayer, recently we got a cutscene where we saw Frank Woods once again return to Laos and hunt for Adler, who we now know is being taken to Verdansk. This takes place in the year 1984, which tells us that this is two years before he is captured in Black Ops 2. So here's where things get incredibly confusing, is because we know Frank Woods is being held captive in Angola, but he's being held captive by 
Raul Menendez, who is actually Nicaraguan. And Nicaragua is essentially on the other side of the world from Angola. So at the very beginning of Black Ops 2, Alex Mason is just sent to Africa to work alongside someone named Jonah Savimbi to find Frank Woods. And at the very end of the first mission, this is what he says to Alex Mason. The MBLA is not yet defeated. That's a very dangerous rescue, my friend. Where is he? He's being held captive by a Nicaraguan gun runner. A very dangerous man. Where? About two miles north. He's on a transport barge on the Tupango River. He may already be dead. Let's go, Hudson! So at this point, we realize where Frank Woods is, somewhere called the Cubongo River in southern Angola. This is also known as the Akavango Basin. I don't know how to say that properly, but essentially what you need to know is it's in South Angola. And this actually tells us a little bit more because it also tells us that he's being held by a Nicaraguan gunrunner who we know is Raul Menendez, but they are also working with the MPLA, which is also known as the People's Movement of Liberation of Angola which is essentially the Labour Party and the way that we look at it is they were the bad guys in Angola. So this is where what James C. Burns said to me comes into play. Again, this is what he said. Who are the other people in the shipping container? So based off of very brief looks, I looked at the two things that James C. Burns says. Where are the shipping markings on the boat and who are the people in container? So. I looked at the boat, there is no shipping markings. However, looking inside the boat, you can very clearly see that the other people with Frank Woods are also other US soldiers. Now, before Cold War came out, I couldn't guarantee that this was the answer to how Frank Woods was captured, but now I can. The reason why Frank Woods was captured is actually because of Ronald Reagan. I mean, Ronald Reagan. The entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. So even though this is interesting, it's kind of boring because it's based off of real world events. What I mean by this is, if you didn't already know, Black Ops Cold War is predominantly based off of things that happen in real life and extrapolating a story off of them. So were the other Black Ops games. This is no exception to how Frank Woods was captured. You see, on the 2nd of June, 1985, there was a civil war going on in Angola, and a bunch of people decided to sit down and try to come to a conclusion. Some of those people included Savimbi, the character that we talked about earlier, and... On top of that, the Nicaraguan Contras. Now, why they were involved in this war is really confusing. We're not gonna dive into that. There's a whole other story behind that. But under the table, the Reagan administration also listened to the dealings as well, even though it wasn't publicly stated. And at the end of this meeting, they decided to come to a peaceful end to the civil war. However, just nine days later, the United States House of Representatives voted to repeal the Clark Amendment, which is the thing that kind of solved the problem in Angola. And with this, the fighting in Angola intensified. The MPLA started many more attacks and more people got involved like Cuba and Nicaragua. The Nicaraguan Contras siding with the MPLA. And can you guess what year this happens? In 1986, the same year Frank Woods was captured. So because of this, the war intensifies and the United States decides to send in more soldiers. And in the Black Ops story, one of those soldiers is not other than Frank Woods. So Ronald Reagan sends in some CIA assets, including Frank Woods, and they get captured. Now, at this time, you may wonder why is everyone inside that shipping container dead but Frank Woods? Well, it's because the Nicaraguan Contras are working with the NPLA, and one of the people in the story who's in charge of those is none other than Raul Menendez. Raul Menendez already knows Frank Woods, and he already knows Adler, he knows Mason, because of working with Perseus. We know this because of the note that we find inside of the cartel map, speaking directly to Menendez from Stitch, working as a Perseus asset. So what I am telling you is Frank Woods was actually left alive inside of the shipping container on purpose, because what Menendez wanted was for the United States to send more American troops in to fight them. Because at this point, Menendez hates the United States for many reasons, and that's a whole other story. I have a whole video on Menendez if you want to check it out. But he hates the United States, and by sending more U.S. troops, the war is only going to 
to intensify, causing more problems throughout the world. And just like many other Call of Duty bad guys, they want this war. They want World War III because remember, Menendez is a gun runner. War makes him money. So let me just show you why I blame Ronald Reagan for this. And it's because if they would have just signed and passed through the Clark Amendment instead of denying it, what would have happened is the war in Angola would have cooled down. They wouldn't have needed to send more of these American soldiers into Angola. But because they did repeal it, Frank Woods was sent in and it gave Raul Menendez a chance to work even closer with Angola, spreading his gun running around the world. At this point is when Raul Menendez starts to get immense power because of the amount of money that he has from running guns. This builds on Raul Menendez's legacy and his money. And by the year 2025, when Black Ops 2 actually takes place, Raul Menendez is a full force to be reckoned with, with his own armies around the world. If Ronald Reagan would have just signed that amendment, Black Ops 2's entire story wouldn't have happened. So this one bill, this one amendment explains why Frank Woods was there, why Raul Menendez was in Angola, and how the entire thing happened. So hopefully I was able to answer the question, how was Frank Woods captured? I know it was a little confusing with all of the real world politics intertwined with it, but that is the answer. So after all of these years, it is finally out there. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you like what you see, you like these story videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're making this too hard.